Sredni Vashta. Part 1. For his good. Conradin was ten years old. He lived with Mrs. de Ropp, who was his cousin and guardian. One day, Mrs. de Ropp called a doctor, because Conradin was always sick. The doctor came and examined him. This boy will only live another five years, said the doctor. I agree, said Mrs. de Ropp. He is such an ill little boy. The doctor's opinion wasn't important to Conradin, but Mrs. de Ropp's was very important. She represented that large part of Conradin's world that was unpleasant, necessary, and real. The other, smaller part of his world was represented by his imagination, his only defence against Mrs. de Ropp. One day, thought Conradin, I'm certain that I'll lose this war against her. Tomorrow will be like today. I'll take my medicine at nine o'clock. I won't play in the garden. I'll go to bed at seven o'clock. Every day I'll do these things, and in the end, I'll die. For the moment, however, Conradin continued to fight his battle, with imagination as his only weapon. Mrs. de Ropp did not admit to herself that she disliked Conradin, but she was probably aware that she took pleasure in stopping him from playing, for his good. Conradin hated her, but he was able to hide this hate. He enjoyed his few pleasures very much, because he knew that Mrs. de Ropp did not approve. There was a garden behind the house, but Conradin never played there. He knew that one of the windows of the house would open, and he would hear Mrs. de Ropp shout, Conradin, come and take your medicine. Or, Conradin, come inside now. It's too cold. Do you want to get ill? So Conradin went to a shed in a far corner of the garden. This shed was his place of refuge. It was in part a cathedral and in part a playroom. Conradin's imagination had filled the shed with hundreds of interesting phantoms, but there were also two real living creatures. One of these was a hen, to which Conradin gave all of his affection. He had no one else and in the back of the shed there was a large hutch. This was the home of a large polecat ferret. Conradin was terribly afraid of this beast with sharp teeth, but it was his most treasured possession. It was also his secret from the woman, which was his own private name for Mrs. de Ropp. And one day he invented a fantastic name for the beast, Sredni Vashta, and it became his god and religion. The woman also had her religion, and she took Conradin to her church once a week. But the woman's religion was not his. Every Thursday, Conradin worshipped his god. He brought it red flowers and red fruit, because Sredni Vashta was an impatient god that would not like the slow, boring rituals of the woman's religion. And on special festivals he brought nutmeg to his god, and it was essential that the nutmeg was stolen from the kitchen of the woman. These festivals were not regular. They were held to celebrate something special that happened. For example, once Mrs. de Ropp had a horrible toothache for three days, and Conradin celebrated for three days. He almost believed that Sredni Vashtar had caused the woman's terrible pain. Unfortunately, the woman noticed that he spent a lot of time in the shed. It is not good for him to be there all the time. I am going to tell the gardener to take away his hen. Then there will be no reason for him to go to the shed, she thought. Part 2 Toast The next day at breakfast, Mrs. de Ropp turned to Conradin and said, 
Yesterday the gardener took your hen away and sold it. She waited for him to say something, to become angry. Then she could explain why the chicken was taken away, for his good. But Conradin said nothing. Perhaps Mrs. de Ropp felt a little guilty, because at tea that afternoon there was toast on the table. Normally Conradin was not permitted to eat toast, even though it was his favourite food. This time, however, he did not eat the toast. I thought you liked toast, she said. Sometimes, said Conradin. In the shed that evening, he changed his manner of worshipping the ferret. Before this, he had only praised his god. Now he asked it for a favour. Do one thing for me, Sredni Vashtar. The thing was not specified. But Sredni Vashtar was a god, and so he knew. Conradin looked at the place where the chicken had lived and almost cried. Then he went back to the world he hated. And every night in the darkness of his bedroom, and every evening in the shed, Conradin said the same thing. Do one thing for me, Sredni Vashtar. Mrs. de Ropp saw that Conradin continued to go to the shed. One day she decided to see why. What do you keep in that hutch? she asked. I think you have some guinea pigs. I will tell the gardener to take them away. The woman then went to Conradin's bedroom to find the key to the hutch. When she found it, she went directly to the hutch to complete her discovery. From a window of the dining room, Conradin could see the door of the shed. He saw that the woman entered. He imagined that she was opening the door of the sacred hutch and trying to see what was hidden inside. Perhaps she would put her hand inside. Conradin said his prayer for the last time. But he knew as he prayed that he did not really believe that the polecat ferret was a god. I'm sure that she will come out in a minute, Conradin thought. With the hutch in her hand, she will have a smile on her face. I hate her smile. Then she will call the gardener and tell him to take away my wonderful god, who is not even a real god. She will win because she always wins. And I will grow sicker and sicker. And she will be right, and the doctor will be right, and I will die. Conradin began to sing loudly to his god. Sredni Vashtar went forth. His thoughts were red thoughts, and his teeth were white. His enemies called for peace, but he brought them death. Sredni Vashtar the beautiful. And then he stopped singing and went near the window. He could see the door of the shed was still open. Time went very slowly. One minute, two minutes, three minutes, but it went. He watched the birds in the garden. They flew in little groups from tree to tree. He counted them. One, two, three, four, five, and then he counted them again. A maid came in with the table for tea, and still Conradin watched. Minutes were moving, and there was hope for the first time. Perhaps victory was near. He started singing again. Sredni Vashtar went forth, his thoughts were red thoughts, and... And then... He saw what he wanted to see. The long yellow and brown beast came out from the shed into the bright sunlight. Its fur was dark with blood. Conradin fell on his knees. The great polecat ferret went to a small stream in the garden. It drank, crossed a little bridge, and then vanished. Tea's ready, said the maid. Where is Mrs. de Ropp? She went down to the shed a half an hour ago, said Conradin. 
The maid left the room to call Mrs. de Rupp. When she had gone, Conradin opened a drawer, pulled out a toasting fork, and started to toast a piece of bread. While he was toasting the bread and putting enormous quantities of delicious butter on it, he listened to the noises that came from downstairs. He heard the maid screaming, <coughs> people running in and out, and finally he heard men carrying some heavy object into the house. Then he heard the maid say, Who will tell the boy the terrible news? I can't. Oh, it's just too horrible. And while the servants debated the matter, Conradin made himself another piece of toast. <laughs>